Thank you, sir. Over to you for your session. Thank you very much. Uh, indeed, pleasure to see the audience in the hall. And let me begin by thanking Bansi for giving me this opportunity. It's totally a new subject. And then when I was in the hall, I understood that it's very important. And um, I think uh, Socratic will come with an inappropriate food can be injurious to health label like the smoking and alcohol are the label. So we can still wait for that. Now what I'm going to speak today is about uh, protein and the We all know the interaction between the prebiotic, probiotic, protein, and the muscle uh, strength or the muscle mass. We know that 73% Indians are protein deficient, over 90% are unaware of daily protein requirement, and 85% believe protein consumption can lead to weight gain and other problems. Health issues associated with low protein intake lead to weakness, increase in hunger, increased susceptibility to infection, mood and cognitive changes, uh, musculopathy, a brittle hair nails, and increased risk of stress fracture. Uh, as the recommended dietary allowance of proteins for adults will be 0.83 gram per day per kilogram for healthy adults, that comes to around 54 grams per day for person weighing 65 kg. And the recommended daily protein intake for older individuals is still higher, and that comes to 1 to 1.5 gram per kilogram per body weight. Uh, that comes to 25 to 30 grams of protein uh, in each meal during the day about the age of 65 years. So we know that, as everybody has mentioned right from the beginning, that so we are carb carbohydrate rich people and we consume only more carbohydrates like up to 65 to 70 percent in our diet are carbohydrates. Our protein sources are two. Animal proteins, they are from meat, milk, milk products, eggs, poultry, fish are the rich sources of protein containing a balanced level of amino acids. Animal proteins have a balanced combination of all amino acids, that is why they are considered to be a complete protein. Milk protein has a higher diet value, while the plant, plant protein has a low diet value. Plant food items like legumes and the nuts are also a source of protein. In contrast, plant or the vegetable protein is incomplete protein and does not have all amino acids. Here is the uh, comparison between the uh, amino acids, uh, the digestible indispensable amino acid source and the protein digestible corrected amino acid score, which is for your information. Now we know that over the time, we build up the protein in early life or muscle mass, and then during the adult life, it is somewhere plateauing, or if there are problems, we usually go and decrease our uh, muscle mass and muscle strength, and in older life, this disparity becomes very evident and we lose a lot of protein if we do not consume protein and do not do, do not take the appropriate measures to keep our muscle healthy. The factors affecting the muscle loss are lifestyle habits like impaired nutrition as a processed food, reduced physical activities, alcohol consumption and cigarette smoking. Along with that there are genes IGF1 and vitamin B receptor genes that can also contribute to the various skeletal markers. Now, prevalence of chronic health conditions in Indians, like irritable bowel syndrome is up to 4 to 7.5 percent, obesity and abdominal obesity ranges from 14 to 58 percent, and 5 out of 10 women, 5 to 6 out of 10 women, between the ages of 39 to 49 are abdominally obese, and the prevalence of osteoporosis and osteopenia was around 20 to 48 percent respectively, and hypertension was common in 24, and diabetes was 10 percent are the common comorbidities. 
how factor affecting the muscle health and the role of nutrients the first thing the what is the function of muscle protein then muscle protein serves as a primary repository of amino acids and provides key amino acids for following function one is the reincorporation of amino acids into muscle protein energy production through oxidation gluconeogenesis for blood regulation and synthesis of immune components like plasma protein hormones and enzymes and factors influencing the muscle development are muscle contraction during exercise that stimulate the muscle growth by triggering the repair and strengthening of muscle fiber and amino acid intake from the diet which is essential for muscle repair and growth that highlight the significance of diet so these are the various things which we need to keep in mind and what is important when we look at the excess alcohol consumption insufficient energy and protein intake excessive calorie intake vitamin d deficiency cigarette smoking and inactive and sedentary lifestyle leads to decreased muscle protein synthesis increased muscle protein degradation and decreased muscle function and quality leading to loss of skeletal muscle mass and strength and function now what is important important for the gut health in the individual we know that when we look at the vital we have to also look at body mass composition and muscle grip should be added to the vital because this is very important to know that whether we are obese we are having sarcopenia our, our obesity is sarcopenic obesity and all these factors are very important so the role of gut health in individual maintaining a healthy gut can significantly reduce the occurrence of severity of functional gastrointestinal disorder persistent digestive issues like gas bloating constipation can alter gut lipidity and microbiota balance and over the time this can be may contribute to the development of various gut problems so healthy gut can be effective in digestion and absorption improved in lipidity stable in intestinal microbiota and effective immune status and absence of gid now the role of gut microbiota is that one in metabolism that synthesis of vitamins and amino acids are very important it metabolizes the non digestible carbohydrates providing the energy for the growth and then there are host protection and immune system development which inhibit the growth of pathogenic bacteria produce anti microbial compounds preventing the colonization of the pathogen and prevent the allergies by modulating the immune system to respond proportionately to the antigen and gut muscle active improves the protein digestibility gut permeability and short chain fatty acid production that reduces the translocation of pro inflammatory molecules and enhances the insulin sensitivity now we have we are commonly hearing the term prebiotics and postbiotics and impact on gut so what are the prebiotics the prebiotics are the food for the microbes that provide the health benefit so prebiotics are probably in one sentence i can say they are the fiber and the probiotics are the live microbes that can provide health benefit when taken in sufficient amount the prebiotic health outcomes as we have seen prebiotics defined as non digestible oligosaccharides undergo transformation by beneficial colonic microorganisms to potentially offer health benefits to the host and prebiotics nourish other beneficial bacteria by supporting the growth and production so these are the various mechanism by which uh, prebiotic help in the health and then we know the dietary fibers which are insoluble dietary fibers and then solitary dietary fiber these dietary fiber consist of remnants of edible portions of the plant cells polysaccharides lignins and associated plant substances that are resistant to digestion the highlight which we have here is the oligosaccharide is fructose oligosaccharide is a is a prebiotic which has lot of uh, characteristics like water soluble highly hygroscopic 
our sickness is less than the sucrose, higher viscosity than sucrose, and it is resistant to hydrolysis by human digestion and that. And the mode of action is that intake reaches the colon, undergoes fermentation by colonic bacteria, and ultimately it helps in the gut health by reducing colonic pH, inhibits the growth of proliferation of harmful bacteria like E. coli and Clostridia virus. And we have clinical evidence is that when impact of fructose uh, oligosaccharides on gut microbiome helps in improving the constipation, improving the functional gastrointestinal disorder, and other also it helps in improving the other problems like constipation, gas, and other things. Likewise, effects of probiotics on human health, we have seen probiotics are useful in immunomodulation, normalizing of the gut microbacteria, microbiota, and metabolic effects in form of vitamin synthesis, decreasing cholesterol, improving lactose intolerance, improving methylene, improving immunity, and decreasing gut, gut disorder, gut infection, and other things. And Commonly used probiotics are Lactobacilli, Bifidobacterium, Saccharomyces, Streptococcus, Enterococcus, Escheria, and Bacilli. These are available either in diet, like yogurt, dietary supplements, which can be captured powder from food and other forms, or can be drink. And the most important one, which is good probiotic, is Bacillus coagulus, unique IS2, which has very important benefit in the gut health. It elevates abdominal pain, normalizes bowel movement, mitigates overall symptom, and it improves the muscle strength and optimizes the protein absorption from the athletic tissue. And when we combine this microbiota with whey protein concentration, it improves the muscle power and plasma amino acids. The, you can see the various beneficial properties of uh, Bacillus coagulus in its IS2 in digestive enzymes, antimicrobial property, and other things. And when we have got clinical evidence that Bacillus coagulus unique IS2 supplementation with whey protein improves the total plasma free amino acids by 16%. It also improves the branched amino acids, including isolating and leucine. And ultimately, supplementation of Bacillus coagulus with whey protein significantly increases the amino acids and improve the protein utilization in the gut. And <laughs> constipation and other features of the gut. Now, probiotics and prebiotics on in protein absorption and muscle integrity, which we have seen is regulate synthesis in microflora, induce post digestive protein intercellular activity, improve small peptide and amino acid absorption, and reduce the harmful fermentation. So another important thing is that muscle building exercise. We are always talking about the exercise, and then um, most of the times when we say that do you exercise, yes, I do yoga. But we have to understand what is the aerobic exercise, what is the muscle binding exercise, and what is the spiritual exercise. And here is the table which tells you about the various muscle uh, building exercises which are very important for improving the muscle, muscle health and muscle power and that when combined with appropriate protein, protein intake and the appropriate prebiotic and postbiotic then and then everything works better in the gut wellness, strength and immunity. So, highlight muscle loss begins as early as 30 can accelerate significantly. Uh, due to lifestyle factors like physical inactivity and malnutrition. The musculoskeletal integrity is maintained by interplay between the protein, calcium, vitamin D. While the primary ro role of protein is to maintain muscle mass, calcium is vital for bone structure and vitamin D also is important for calcium absorption of bone health. Maintaining a healthy gut, gut microbiota and effectively managing the gut health is good like IBS. Constipation bloating is crucial as gut health plays a vital role in nutrient digestion, absorption, and muscle protein synthesis. 
high protein supplementation, including prebiotic and postbiotic, is physical activity can mitigate muscle deterioration and enhance muscle function by improving the muscle protein synthesis. And prebiotics and probiotics, including the stress coagulants, uh, unique IS2 and fructose oligosaccharides, have been shown 